Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we'll continue our discussion related to electrical and electronics measurement. So we have discussed a lot of uh, performance parameters, uh, the static performance parameters or characteristics. So in this video, we are going to discuss about loading effects in measurement system. Now we all know that the measurement system it uh, involves a lot of uh, blocks, individual blocks that are in between the input signal and the output uh, signal, the output uh, input and the output. This whole two extreme points. We have a lot of subsystems. Each has its own role to play. And because of this subsystems that are involved in between the input and the output. This concept of loading effect, it comes into play. So loading effect, if we try to understand it in a simple way, it means that whatever the original input signal is, okay, whatever the original input signal is, when it is given to a particular block or a system the output which we'll get it will be so in some way you know distorted or attenuated or there will be some loss okay in any kind and these things they result in some kind of a you know the exact reproduction of the original signal faithful reproduction of the original signal is not possible because of this okay the faithful reproduction of the original signal is not possible so as the number of blocks increases more the number of blocks in between the input and the output and these things will get added up more distortion more attenuation more signal loss and as a result the final output which will get it will be in some way corrupted so this phenomena which is introduced by each block, each subsystem which is present in between the input and the output which does not faithfully reproduce the original signal of interest that is called as loading effect. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. So it is the inability of a system to exactly reproduce, faithfully reproduce the original signal at the output. So when it is passed through multiple subsystems, now we know in sensors, transducers, in signal processing, in communication systems, in measurement systems, whichever field you take, when there are a lot of subsystems involved and there are a lot of subsystems involved in between the input and the output, there will be loss of signal at each level, at each block. Some portion of the signal will be lost, will be distorted, will be attenuated. And as a result, the final output which we get, it will not be you know, the same as the input signal. It will be different by how much factor or by how much degree it is different, that is a different thing. But it will be different, it will not be the same. And this inability of the system to faithfully produce the original signal is called as loading effect. Now loading effect, uh, it is a very you know complex thing to understand, but we'll try to understand it in a simple way. We'll not go unnecessarily deep into this. So in a simple way, we'll try to understand. So basically, we'll discuss about the loading effects because of 
input impedance and admittance and output impedance and admittance so impedance when we are dealing with voltage sources admittance when we are dealing with current sources okay this so first we'll deal with input impedance so let us say we have the original signal in the form of a voltage source okay of value let's say the input side it is given by this and we have a device which is connected we can consider it uh, as a measurement device or a subsystem anything okay so we have a device connected uh, to this voltage source as a result of which a current flows i subscript i the input current and this is the voltage at the input side ei the input impedance is given by this z now we know impedance is simply voltage by current okay so here zi is simply ei by ii now because of this connection of the device to the voltage source and this flow of current there will be power extracted by this device from this voltage source or power supplied by the voltage source to the device <coughs> sorry so this power loss is what causes distortion power loss or power extraction by this device it causes distortion okay so the more the power loss the more the distortion and the less the power loss the less the distortion so this power loss or the power uh, extracted by the device from this voltage source is given by ei ii product of voltage and current okay or we can write it as here we can substitute ii as ei by zi and here we can write it as ei to ei by zi which is ei square by zi so here the instantaneous power extracted by the device from the voltage source is ei square by zi so here the more the input impedance the less the power and the less the input impedance the more the power extracted so what we want is that the power loss or the power extraction should be less and for that the ideal condition is that the input impedance should be high okay the input impedance should be high this is for voltage source voltage signal at the input and ideally for zero power loss okay for zero power extraction which is the ideal condition it should be infinite the input impedance should be ideally infinity which is not possible but for an ideal case in that case it will be p is equal to ei square by infinity which is equal to 0 but it is not possible infinite input impedance is not possible but it is the ideal case so for input side dealing with voltage sources the ideal condition is that the input impedance should be high okay
this so a good way to understand this whole thing is we know that a voltmeter is uh, connected in parallel to measure voltage so for that <clears throat> whenever a voltmeter is connected to a particular device that voltmeter should have high input impedance in that case the power extraction from the source okay the voltage source where the voltage reading is to be taken the power extraction will be less as a result distortion will be less it means faithful reproduction of the original signal okay so this is an example of this device just simply replace the device with a voltmeter so it should have high input impedance so that it extracts minimum amount of power from the source where the terminals where the voltage is to be measured and faithful reproduction of the signal is possible so this we have discussed about input impedance now we'll discuss about input admittance <clears throat> so here as like i said when we discuss about admittance current source come into play so here the same thing instead of a voltage source we have a current source and we have a device connected to it then the voltage across the two ends it is ei here again the same principle because of this there is a current flow and whenever there is voltage and current involved there will be power loss or power extraction by the device from the source so here the power extracted from the device again it is ei ii so here instead of impedance admittance input admittance comes into play so admittance is simply the reciprocal of impedance which is ii by ei 1 by zi so here we can write uh, ii as ei by zi or we can write it as uh, ei yi okay like that so here we can write it as ei is equal to ii by yi and this will replace here instead of ei so it will become ii by yi into ii which is ii square by yi because we want a relationship between power and input admittance this and this how this affects the power so here as you can see from the expression the more the input admittance okay the more the input admittance the less the power okay the power extraction is less and when the input admittance is less the power extraction is high so high yi leads to low power extraction which is low distortion and low input admittance leads to high power extraction that is high distortion so this is the ideal case where low power extraction and low distortion is there and that is because of high input admittance okay high input admittance or low input impedance okay because it is reciprocal high yi input admittance or low zi input impedance this this is the ideal condition 
for input side dealing with current source always remember we are dealing with current source here when we are dealing with voltage source the ideal condition was that input impedance should be high or admittance is low input impedance is high means admittance is low because it is the reciprocal that is for voltage source for current source input admittance should be high input admittance is high input impedance is low <coughs> okay so in order to explain this we know ammeter is connected in series for current measurements okay for current measurements so here for the ammeter the input admittance should be high or input impedance should be low that will lead to low power extraction low power loss and that will lead to low distortion and that means more faithful reproduction of the original signal okay so here as we are dealing with current sources that's why the example of ammeter is appropriate here we are dealing with voltage sources that's why the example of voltmeter is appropriate okay <coughs> so here instead of the device just replace the ammeter for current measurements so here in that case the input admittance should be high impedance should be low so always remember for voltage sources input impedance should be high admittance should be low the same thing it is for current sources input admittance should be high impedance should be low okay so here we have discussed loading effects with respect to input impedance and input admittance okay so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much